Comrades, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I am Admiral Andre, and today I'm in the mood for something a little different, something a little less structured, perhaps. I was thinking, uh, there was a comment, this is now already a long time ago, asking me to launch something like the Indian rocket that took, I think it was 104 satellites up into orbit in one go. Let's try and do something like that. I don't think we're going to get quite that number, but something in that range. Let's try anyway. So let's go into the VAB and just see what we can do with that. Right, so my first idea was to use one of our existing rockets to actually launch this so we don't have to build a new one. So let's have a look. One of the possibilities is maybe using the Saturn 1B. So let's just have a look. That's the first thing that came to mind because we don't exactly need a Saturn 5 for that. Now the question is, where did I save this thing? Uh, that's, uh, that's the question. Hmm. Let me find this thing. Saturn, Soyuz, good grief. Oh, I think I know what's going on here. It's because that was built in a different save and I haven't moved over the uh, save uh, craft file yet. So maybe we'll just build a new rocket, but I'm not going to worry about recreating one of the Indian rockets. We can do that in the future sometime. So let's just say cancel that. So what do we do then? Let's have a look. First of all, I think we are going to go for the three meter diameter parts for the rocket itself, the 3.75 meters. I think that'll give us a bit of a diameter here. Going for the absolute largest size is, I don't know if that's really really thematically a good thing because you don't need a Saturn V class rocket to launch a lot of small satellites. So let's have a look. The best platform I guess is going to be the Probodobodyne QBE because that's a CubeSat in a way. It's not a perfect cube of course, more like a rectangular set, but anyway. So how many of these could we fit on here? Of course with this I want to use the truss structure. Now where are all the attachment points? Let's just have a look. I haven't done that in a long time. So we do have quite a bit of range here. So we can build several decks of satellites here. So let's have a look. Maybe we should have first of all Let's just see if we can use like a platform. I'm wondering if we might use the engine plates for that. Then we can attach the various satellites onto that. So where's the node? Show me the truss. There. Because the question is if I want to use the octagonal struts, I can't actually use them to attach to these truss things because they don't really exist here. They're just a placeholder essentially. So you can't actually attach to them. So we're going to need like a plate or something to uh, make it easier for us to mass produce our satellite. So let's have a look at this. Uh, just go back to the engine plate. So that gives me... This might be a little too wide. But if I take the same thing several times, it might actually work. Yes, that should leave us enough room for the sets in between. Yes, that's fine. So, okay, clear all of this and firstly, let's build the satellite. So this will be the prototype. Now, I was thinking if we're going to imagine something here, we can say that various Kerbal universities and companies and even governments have donated these various satellites to the launch because obviously they want a relatively cheap way to get into space and by launching many many of them at the same time you can share the costs. So let's use this cube thing here. It's not quite a cube. Well I guess if you look at it from this angle but this is the platform or the satellite bus that we're going to use. Now Whatever payloads the various customers want, that's up to them. We'll pretend they actually uh, are involved with that and they have their instruments in here. So I'm not going to put various scientific things on here because it's not for a specific client here, like a contract. But uh, we imagine they have their own equipment in there. Now obviously they will have to get uh, power, so we can just take care of that. 
four of those. I don't think we're going to put extra antennas on here. I don't know if that's necessary. The inbuilt antennas of the various probe cores should be more than enough. I mean, this is low orbit anyway, so we know it's more than enough to maintain communications there. So let's just make this thing look nice. I like that. So that can be our basic uh, structure there. Now we do need a battery so it can continue its function in the night time on the dark side of the planet. So let's just take one of these. Could we use a small round one? No, it's going to be too wide so it has to be something like this. Now to get this perfectly centered is another story. So I'm wondering if we shouldn't just use two here. You see it's not really going to show up. Maybe it doesn't matter then. This thing weighs almost nothing anyway. Turn that off. We'll just guess this thing roughly like that. Now, of course, we built this into the bus of the satellite here. Not going to have the batteries be exposed to the vacuum of space. So there's the thing. And then, of course, the rest of the interior space is up to the various uh, owners of the satellites to decide. Now, if we do have an antenna here, it would be something simple like that. I'm just wondering now, because if we deal with large numbers of parts again, we're going to have some serious slowdown again. Uh, do we really need that? Well, I was looking at the launch of the 104 satellites from the Indian rocket, and they, the nanosats, did seem to have antennas on them. So let's try this. I'll have to put them all on a hotkey and just deploy them at the same time, which is going to be interesting uh, exercise. But we'll say like that. At least then the satellites can communicate and share their data and all of that. So this is it. I don't want anything more. I know they don't have reaction wheels in them, but I'm not going to put separate parts for that. So if we just, uh, if I can just get that thing to stay open there, uh, just as stability assist, so no actual talk. But that's fine. This is a very basic cheap satellite, so it's a hundred kilos, so what class of satellite would that be? Let me have a look actually, I'm just opening uh, internet here again. Uh, satellite classes, let's say small. I know small satellites are under, under 500 kilograms. Let's just have a look at all the classifications. Here it is, okay. A large satellite is over a thousand kilograms. A medium satellite is 500 to a thousand. A mini sat is a hundred to 500 and a micro sat is 10 kilograms to 100 kilograms. So we're on the border between a micro and a mini satellite. Let's say it's a micro satellite. Nano satellites are one to 10 kilograms. Pico satellites are 0 0.1 to 1 kilogram and femto satellites are less than 100 grams. Can you believe it? Anyway, so we say that this is a micro satellite just for my own interest. So now we take this and we are going to have to reproduce this now many, 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 many times. So how can we do this? What's the easiest way? Hmm. I think we'll have to use it as a sub assembly. So let's just get a normal small decoupler for that. Absolute minimum force. And let's get another one. Or do I want to keep this? No. Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> Can't make up my mind. Let's get rid of it. We'll put it on the rocket itself. So I'll just reroute the thing to the... Uh, decoupler and then take the satellite and put it into the sub assembly. So this, what shall we call this? Cube sets, experiment sets, whatever the case might be. Let's just say set, save and new. Now we just have to get the thing back here again. First of all, I think we have to have some kind of control mechanism for the upper stage of the rocket so we can deorbit that when we are done with it. Then let's just get some power on here. It doesn't have to be too much. Just like that. And then where's the uh, airstream thing? We can put that inside that I think just to make it a bit neater there. 
Mm, it's going to stick out there. Oh well, if it sticks out a little on the bottom, that's fine. It's still level there. Okay, now what am I doing? Clicking all the wrong things again. So how many floors can we get with this interstage thing? First of all, we just need an engine plate. We'll put one right on the bottom as well. I think we'll flip this over and I don't want this to be staged. So it doesn't add to the complexity here. So firstly, I think we want to have these uh, cubic octagonal struts. That will be the attachment points. So how many can we attach to this? Oh, if I use the snap, then it's all messed up here. So I'm not going to do that. So let's say eight there. And we don't have to worry about lining this up now very neatly. So another eight. So 16 on the outer ring. We could probably fit in more there. Should we push it though? Mm, let's just see if we can get away with this whole thing. So how many is that? So it's 8 plus 8, that's 16, plus 8, that's 24, plus 8, that's 32, plus another 8. So 40? 40 satellites per row? That will work. That's a lot. We can get more than 104 satellites like that. I hope my math was right. So then, uh, now because I didn't actually attach the uh, decoupler, now I'm regretting it because now I have to do it all. Just get it to a minimum force here. There's probably going to be more parts on this rocket than on the Mir station. Oh well, that'll be a fun time. I don't want to get the strut again. Now it's a bit too wide here, but okay, the fairing is going to go around that. The problem is here now. I don't want these uh, decouplers to be clashing with one another. Maybe 40 is too much. Let's make the inner row six. Oh, even that's too much. But we can fit it in like that, just so they don't clash there. But for these rows, I don't think eight is going to be, uh, or 16 is going to be right. So we'll, hmm. Let's use six like that. And now we can't even fit in another six there. Well, it can overlap a little bit. At least that's a better layout, I think. Now, how many do we have here? Good grief, I don't even know now. Shall I count them? Oh dear, uh, this might take a while. So that's six. And I think this is six plus six. Is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Good grief, I'm already losing track here. I'll be back with you in a second, comrades. Comrades, if I'm not mistaken, that's 30 per row now, or per level. That's not too bad. So let's lower these things just so we don't clash with the next level. And then once we have this done, we can just reproduce this and save ourselves some trouble. Okay, so that's all done. They're all on the lowest force percent. I could make it zero, but Let's have them move a little bit. Now, oh, what's this? I've never seen this in my life before. Okay, well, it doesn't seem to affect this stuff. Maybe... Good grief. We'll have a look at that in a minute, comrades. I've never even noticed that before. Maybe that means we can paint any rocket, not just the ones that uh, have the tanks that can change colors. Okay, the next thing we also have to do is just put everything on the same key here. We might make them detach by levels. I think that will be a, a decent thing. Now, where's my sub-assembly? Sats. Okay, there's the first lot. And then we just... Oh, no, 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 no. Reproduce that. Good grief. Okay, they're touching a little bit there, but it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> That's a lot of satellites. Good grief. Okay, well, hmm. 
this is a new f new experience for me let's just put all of these antennas on action group one i wonder what's going to happen the whole thing might explode if we do that toggle antennas now i need to keep track of them all i'm not doing this manually i think that's all of them okay let's hope so so that's the first lot now with the second lot uh do we just we just reproduce this so alt click on the engine plate uh oh it was uh, trying to attach to the satellites let's make this one time before everything crashes here that'll do i know they're just gonna bump into that when we release them but that's okay now wait a minute what's happening here What's that structure there? No, this is not the right attachment point. It looks like it's attaching underneath the various levels. You see, the, the stuff is above it. Yes, you can see it there. Now, why is this the case? Clearly we see two attachment points there, but it doesn't want to snap to that other one. Not at all. Ah, infuriating. Let's find a plate or something. There we go. Then we'll just put this on top of that. Some, If it will go now. Why is it refusing to do that? No, come on now. This is messing with my plan here there we go doesn't want to play along so that means more parts more parts complexity oh well the biggest launch in Kerbal history at least for me come on Again, it wants to attach underneath. There's one going. Uh, well, we'll just have to keep trying until they play along. Good grief. This is going to be absolutely insane. Maybe I'm overdoing it. If things crash here, comrades, you must forgive me. We'll know why. Okay, that's... How many parts? A thousand six hundred and thirty four parts. Are you mad? Are you out of your mind? This will never work. Ish. Well, we'll see. That's absolutely insane. Why am I doing this? Okay, I'm not even going to care about the order in which they release now. Doesn't matter. Uh, okay, now we need a rocket for this. This is going to be like a slideshow, comrades. Well, let's have a look. Let's build this thing first. Build the fairing. Just hide everything. Before my computer has a heart attack. Or a... Whatever, a RAM attack or something. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, there it is. Hidden. We'll pretend we didn't see that. Now, what do we need? Let's just save this thing before Armageddon happens. Uh, mega set. Save. Now. No, wrong size. Actually, we don't need an upper stage of that size. It's only 21 tons. I mean, it's... It's not the lightest launch ever, but it certainly isn't the heaviest considering how many parts there are. Now, I have to say, comrades, this is probably going to cause major troubles for us. I'm going to launch this from the desert launch site because it's slightly offset from the equator. And uh, obviously, over time, all these satellites will drift. They won't stay in a cluster anymore. So we'll get a ring around planet Kerbin eventually. But to avoid any future collision risks or at least minimize that i'm not launching it from this launch pad because that's one of our most used orbital insertions the equatorial one 
and then uh, at some point we might get an accident and this should also be lower than the uh, mere station I don't want this stuff hitting it I admit it would be interesting but I don't want that kind of interesting in in uh, our career here that's the wrong kind of interesting let's take the wolfhound 6,000 meters per second. Good grief. Maybe we'll put this in a higher orbit. I'm not sure. Although CubeSats and other microsats usually should go in a very low orbit because of the power of the antennas and all of that. Yes, I suppose we'll do that. We'll put this in like a 90 kilometer orbit or 100 kilometers. Somewhere around there. Now, should we have this plate here? Ah, it doesn't matter. Well, that's the upper stage and the insertion stage all in one, which is a good thing because we want to minimize the rest of the parts here. Not that it's going to help too much. Now, maybe this one. Now it's too... I can already see the lag spikes. Where is this attachment point? Oh, it's inside the other one. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. This is going to be mania, comrades. Hey. Uh, what are we going to use to launch this? It doesn't matter. I'm not going to put too much thought into the rocket. That's a heck of a lot of Delta V, I have to say. This should be enough. I can take some of the fuel out of the first stage. Severe lag, six frames a second. Oh no, what am I doing? Am I am I crazy? Eventually it'll be okay because they'll spread out and then then it's fine. But having them in a cluster like this is a really bad idea. <laughs> and that's why I love it. Uh, let's should we even bother reinforcing stuff? I'll just say reinforce this to the uh, heaviest part and just put some clamps on. Again, a bad idea. It's more parts. This stuff is probably going to crash the instant I launch it. Let's just use two clamps. Ah, now, of course, all the staging is messed up as well. Uh, we need the wolfhound. So the wolfhound has to go there. And underneath that has to be this thing. And underneath that has to be that thing and of course the clamps save again comrade see you on the desert launch pad let's hope this doesn't end badly should we have fins on here no don't even think about it comrades we're here 12 frames a second which is surprising but a good thing so at least it's manageable I think but we haven't started the launch yet let's just have a look at the part number at the moment with the rocket and everything that's uh, 1641 now it would be more impressive to wait for the daytime so let's see if we can do that Just get to the sunrise, but of course then we have to deal with all the clouds and all of that as well. Okay, this might crash my computer. If it does, keep me in your keep me in your thoughts and prayers. F5 this and it's not saving there, it's only now saving. Alright comrades, this is it. Let's see what we can do. SAS active. Again, I think better a low orbit than a high one. We might want to build future stations and things like that. Now, this is also going to cause absolute chaos for our communications <laughs> network because we'll just be seeing green lines all over the place. This will completely overload the deep space network. But anyway, we'll give everyone a limited bandwidth. Let's say that. Hey, so five, four, three, two, one. Ah, no, comrades. Uh, we ran out of fuel way too fast on this first stage. We need more fuel in the first one than in the second one. So, uh, unfortunately, I think we were at about 8 kilometers when the wolfhound had to start and it didn't have enough thrust. So, 
I just exited out, just reverted again. But yes, it's a slow, slow launch. Good grief. Uh, let's make the second stage a bit lighter. I think we need more than this. More engines or something. This is bad. This is very bad. 11 frames a second is what I got, but I'm under the impression that it was actually a bit less than that because everything was so slow. Where's this engine now? Maybe this will be better. Yes, why not? Could even fill this up again. Or not. Keep it above one. Alright comrades, let's try again. Save and go back to the slideshow. And it's back at night again comrades. Let's launch in the night. Maybe it means there's less demands graphically because we don't really see the clouds being illuminated and all of that. Not sure if it will make a difference, but let's try anyway. I'm also wondering just before we release the satellites if I change the name of the original probe core to debris or like actually its classification if it's also going to uh, reclassify everything as debris because I don't want a thousand pieces or whatever the case to show up constantly on our tracking station list because we'll never see the things that we want to see but anyway let's just see if this thing will launch F5 again and Let's save the countdown. It takes long enough anyway to just get through the launch. Comrades, we're above the atmosphere. I did uh, not want to release the fairings before we were out of the atmosphere because having so many satellites interact with the atmosphere would have been disastrous. Let's separate. And there it goes. So yes, I'm sorry if you didn't see too much during the launch. I wanted to zoom out as far as possible so we didn't see any atmospheric effects or heating because that would have put even more strain on the system which is currently giving me 9 frames per second so yes this is interesting let's wait until the sunlight hits it then we'll see so let's wait until we're up at about 100 that will practically render the 100 kilometer orbital slot unusable for the rest of time <laughs> at least on this inclination maybe we'll go a little should we go a little above that? Let's say 105. Just so we try and avoid any clashes in the future. Now the Mir station is at 120, so that should have no impact on that. And we did put the separation force for the decoupler at absolute minimum, so it's not going to change the orbit. We just need to get into a circular orbit right now. And it's very, very slow. Oh, good grief. I'll skip ahead again, comrades, until we are in our desired orbit. Let me just F5, or should I even? No, don't even risk F5. No, do it.
Okay, comrades, 110 kilometers. I know that's putting it a bit close to the Mir station, but 10 kilometers is still fine to give us a space there. So let's see if we can get this into a nicely circular orbit. That's the challenge now. Everything is so slow. Even in map view, I'm only getting 11 frames. So that's 109, 110, 110. That's it. That's all we need. So lock to the maneuver. And it's three minutes until we get there. Now, I didn't put a reaction wheel on here. But we should still get a little bit of reaction control from the probe core. Hopefully that will be enough, but you know it's happening so slowly now. We can see it is drifting there a little bit. Well, I'll just have to wait, comrades. I'll see you at the maneuver. Or no, we'll burn and just see what happens. Let the engine make the change. So yes, these little lines here from the communications network, uh, imagine having dozens of those. Okay, we should be going now. So horrifically slow. 10 frames a second. But yes, I didn't fiddle with the uh, graphics since the shuttle docking episode, so we are still looking pretty good here, full textures and all of that. Okay, periaps is going up. Let's just wait till it gets to 110-ish, but not much higher than that. Okay, let me just stop there. It's gonna flip. 110, 110. So, F5 that. Quick saving. Okay, let's hope it can save all of that. I had three frames there for a moment. Now it's eight frames a second. Ooh, this is bad. What's going to happen the minute we deploy the antennas? Okay, first of all, I want to go in here and change the naming of this thing. We'll put it on debris, just because we don't want to see this the whole time in our tracking station. Remote Guidance Unit, let's hope it's going to rename everything. Yeah? So, rename Vessel, we'll leave it on Megasat, and we'll say Debris. Just so we can toggle it off. Okay, give me the free camera again for what it's worth. Now, I'm a little scared of this release. That's going to be a lot of satellites at once. Maybe we should stagger it a little. Let's put 12 on the first batch. What's going to happen if I press number 1 now? Just F5 again. Please, computer, don't crash. Number 1. All the antennas are deploying. I don't think they count really as physical objects because they pass right through the engine plates there, but still, there's all the antennas deployed. Detach the thing. Hey. Three frames per second. One frame per second. Eight frames per second. I'm sorry, computer. I'm really sorry that I'm doing this to you now. Uh, well, there they go. Now what happens? We need to actually move around a little so we can shake them loose, basically. At least they're not attached to the craft anymore. It's not really helping, though. Let's just see if I can move. I should have put an, a reaction wheel on here. I've got basically no control. Uh, what am I going to do? Should we just detach the next lot? No, don't do so many at once. That's crazy. Okay, next batch. One frame a second. If there's going to be a desync between my voice and the video, you'll know why. It's because 
everything is messed up in those moments. Luckily my computer is not really heating up now, it's 41 degrees. It's uh, winter here, so that's helping. In the summer I would never try this. Now let's release the next batch. At least they'll start floating away now. So that's also why eventually they'll spread out into a whole ring around the planet, I think. We'll check in with them occasionally to see how they're doing. Let's release the next batch. At some points, I guess we get zero frames a second. Okay, the next batch is done. Let's release the next one. It's not really affecting our performance because all of this stuff still has to be rendered here. I love that each individual bang happens. Bang, 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 bang. It's not just in one go. It's because I guess the program here can't handle all of them at the same time. Uh, go on, get out of here. Let's do the next batch. We're going to have to count these at some point. If it is 30 on each ring, I hope I counted correctly. Comrades, you can confirm that. Then it's 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180 satellites. So take that, India. <laughs> of course, it's not nearly the complexity of the real thing, but in the real world, you don't have frame rate issues and part count problems. Okay, next batch. Right, so some of them are starting to drift now, which is good. We're also still rolling around here, which is a good thing, so we shake them loose. But I have effectively no control over things. Or a, a little bit, maybe as we lose some of the weight of the satellites. Okay, I think we can go for the next batch. We only have seven frames a second now. Oh, forgive me, comrades, forgive me. I'm trying here. Gonna have to get my computer a present after this. Next batch. So, yes. If we had a much bigger launch, we could give a satellite to each of the subscribers, each of our fellow comrades. Maybe that's something we could do one day. Not one launch like that, but a few like this. Then we can name each satellite after somebody. So each name, each one will be named, but that will be probably crazy. Who knows? Do we still have a batch of six? Let's get the next six going. And another set. <laughs> this is going to take forever. All right, let's talk about space debris. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, mad science, I guess. I wonder if anyone else has done something like this in KSP before. Maybe. Anyway, next patch. I just love that sound effect. Bang, 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 bang. Okay, we have six more on the next one. Then we still have two more sets. Let's just get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. It's not going to really uh, help hanging on to them. So we can deorbit the rocket. That will help a little. Next batch. Good grief. This rocket should have been called Good Grief, not Mega Set. Okay, next batch. Probably two or three more after this. Is that... Okay, these ones still have to go. Then we'll have another 12. And then the final set, but again, this will be spread over, uh, over several sessions. We can't do that many in one go. That will be pushing it. 
seven six frames a second don't to zoom in there next patch and only 18 to go so let's split it into a six and another 12. right comrades brace yourselves the last batch okay everything is now released here the question is now can we actually deorbit this thing without knocking the satellites around i think we're gonna have to fast forward a little oh good grief look at these clouds of satellites just f5 again okay let's i think time warp let's hope they'll pass through us here yes just makes it easier otherwise we're gonna have to wait forever there you go the clouds and clouds of satellites almost done then i'll just burn the engine to get us out of here Okay, they still have this one. I guess that's okay. Coming out of time warp and nine frames. So that <clears throat> mm, losing my voice. It's too. It's too amazing here. Nine frames. Let's just kick the thing a little bit. Don't want to change the orbit of the satellites though. That would be a disaster. Just get us away. Then I'll do the retro burn. But there you go, comrades. How is that? How is that? Have I fulfilled the mission? There's our uh, thumbnail for today. Can't see it like that. Like that. Look at that. Stunning. <laughs> I'm glad I did this. Let's just time warp a little as we... Oh, we're still dragging some of them along with us. That's not good. At least we're still 10 by 10. Or 110 by 110. Just want us to not do this because we're dragging them all over the place now. This is a bug, I think. Oh dear, I don't know. No, they're just knocked. Okay. We're gonna knock this one again. That's the last one. Goodness gracious, I hope this was all classified as debris here. Doesn't look like it. Ay, 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 ay. Right, burn, get us out of here. Imagine tracking all of this stuff. Anyway, let's see if we can do a retro burn. Well, actually, we should wait a little until we're two kilometers away. <laughs> Look at that. Looks like a junk field. New asteroid belt. No, that's madness. How many is it? 180 satellites. Okay, I think we can burn a bit more aggressively now. Over time, because some of them we can see are clearly higher than the others, so the lower ones are going to have a faster orbit, even if it's only a few meters per second or centimeters per second, so they definitely will spread themselves out. That should be an interesting thing. Now, how far away are we? Only 400 meters. Let's time up to we're two kilometers away. I want my frames back, please. Okay, we're up to 14, 15 frames. It's because it's still tracking all of those. But anyway, now at least we uh, have a bit more. So we 16 frames. So we can actually do something here. Let's burn the engine. Get us back into the atmosphere. I don't want more debris here. And this thing is still significant slowdown because it has 377 parts just for the rocket. Let's make it hit the ground. Okay, let's go back to the space.
pay center and see what this looks like in the tracking station. You see, comrades, this is what we get for our sinful ways. The whole planet has flooded. Well, apart from the mountains there. Of course, this is just because of scatterer here, but it's the punishment from the gods for uh, wrecking the frame rate so much. Okay, comrades, we are in the tracking station. We are seeing all of our satellites still showing up here. They're not classified as debris. Oh well, we can rename them, luckily. This is something I only found out very recently. I never knew that you could rename things from the tracking station. All that you do is you click on it and you go to the information and you double click on the name there. And then you can rename it. Now this is going to be a very long and tedious process, so I'm not going to bore you with that. But especially if they get spread out all over the place, it's going to be a total mess here. But yes, there we see them. Uh, should I just rename them? I'm not going to do it now. Let's fast forward a little and see what happens. The cloud is obviously there. You can see it starting to separate now. I'm getting 13 frames a second in the tracking station. That tells you how bad things are. What if I turn on the off the comm network? It's 14 frames. No, I'll have to rename these. That will make it easier. At least if it is on the debris, then we won't sh uh, show it here. So that's it, comrades. What about a crazy experiment for a Sunday? See you next time and have a fantastic day. And may your frame rates be better.